we're going to use this simulation molecule shapes to look at the relationship between the interaction of electron domains and the 3D molecular geometry. Electron domains refer to any region of space occupied by electrons and this includes as listed over here on the top right hand side single bonds, double bonds, triple bonds, and lone pairs or non-bonding pairs. We can examine these by manipulating this model. This is the simple example of uh, a two electron domain molecule. Central atom bonded to two other atoms. And you'll notice that as we move it, the molecule automatically snaps into shape. The idea being that these electron domains will always space themselves to minimize the potential energy that is to be as far apart from each other as possible. Because the electron domains repel each other, they will automatically move as far apart as possible. This two electron domain down here on the lower left hand side we can see that the electron geometry is linear, that is the two electron domains are oriented in a linear fashion with respect to each other. The molecular geometry is also linear. The three molecules all occur on the same axis. Now we're going to add a third electron domain and we'll see what happened then. In response to the third electron domain, the other uh, electron domains have moved further apart. And we now here have a, a symmetrical molecule. All the three um, um, atoms attached to the central atom are all in the same plane and they form this trigonal pattern. And if we look at the bond angles, we can see the bond angle is 120 degrees. So the electron geometry is trigonal planar and the molecular geometry is also trigonal planar. Now we're going to replace one of the single bonds with a lone pair. And notice that essentially the same thing happens. The lone pair is an electron domain and it repels the other two uh, electron domains away from it. So there's a, a bond angle here of 120 degrees. So the electron geometry is trigonal planar. That is, the three electron domains are arranged in a trigonal planar arrangement. But if we, um, if we don't show the lone pair and we hide it, we can see the molecule now consists of the central atom with two atoms bonded to it, and the bond angle is 120 degrees. The lone pair is not bonded to anything, and so as such it does not contribute to the geometry of the molecule itself. It contributes to the geometry of the electron domains, but not to the name of the molecule. So if we hide the lone pair, we can see that the shape of this molecule is bent, and we can see down here that the molecular geometry is in fact bent. Okay, let's put our... Okay, there's that one. Oh, I better remove that lone pair. So now we're back to three electron domains, the trigonal planar, and we're going to put a fourth bond in there. And the minute that happens, the shape of the molecule becomes three-dimensional. We can rotate this around. The bond angle is 109 degrees and a half, and this particular shape is called tetrahedral. The electron domains are arranged in a tetrahedral pattern, as are the, the molecule itself. The geometry of this molecule is tetrahedral. Okay, let's replace one of the electron domains. Well, maybe what I'll do is we'll take a look at uh, an example of this. A real molecule like this would be the molecule methane, CH4. And here we have four hydrogen atoms attached to a central carbon atom. The molecule is tetrahedral in shape, and if we look at the bond angles, we can see it's 109 and a half degrees, as we would expect. So let's go back to our model now, and we're going to replace one of the singly bonded atoms with a lone pair, or a non-bonding pair. And we can see here the shape of the molecule is still tetrahedral. The three um, or the four electron domains are still in a tetrahedral pattern. 
But remember, when we're going to name the shape of the molecule, we don't pay attention to the lone pair. So we are going to hide the lone pair. And we can see now that the molecule looks like a little pyramid, a three-sided pyramid. So even though the electron geometry is tetrahedral, the molecular geometry is trigonal pyramidal. So trigonal means three-sided, pyramidal means like a pyramid. And we can see that molecule shape right here, a little pyramid of three sides. Uh, an example of a molecule like this would be ammonia, NH3. And here we have a nitrogen atom with three hydrogen atoms bonded to it and a lone pair sticking up on top. If we hide the lone pair, we can see the trigonal pyramidal shape of this particular molecule. Now let's go back to our model. And now we're going to show the lone pair. And we're going to remove one of the single bonds and add another lone pair. Now these lone pairs and bonding pairs would be determined by drawing the Lewis dot structure of the molecule. Then we look at the uh, interaction of the electron domains to actually look at the three-dimensional shape of the molecule. So uh, we can see here then that the electron pairs, or the electron domains rather, are arranged in a tetrahedral pattern with respect to each other. Now we're going to hide the lone pairs and just look at the molecule itself. And here we have a molecule with the two atoms bonded to the central atom and a bond angle of 109.5. So the electron geometry is tetrahedral. But when we remove the lone pairs, we can see that the shape of the molecule is bent. Now we can look at a real example of this. And the best example of that, of course, is the water molecule, H2O. And here we have the two hydrogen atoms bonded to the central oxygen atom and the two lone pairs sticking out there. So if we hide those lone pairs, we can see there's the shape of the water molecule. And that's the classical bent shape for the water molecule. If we go back to our model now and show the lone pairs again, now we remove one more. Whoops, I meant to take it away. We remove one more of those and we add the third lone pair. And this molecule then is a re relatively simple idea. It's linear. Even though the electron domains are arranged in a tetrahedral pattern, that is the electron geometry is tetrahedral, when we hide the lone pairs we can see that the molecule itself is planar. Now every once in a while uh, you come across a molecule that uh, has, where the central atom has more than eight electrons, has more than the octet. It's done what we call expanding the octet. So we're going to have a look at, okay, here is the, um, oh, we've got to get rid of those lone pairs. Yes, take those away. So there's four, and here's five. So this molecule now has five electron domains around it. And you'll notice that it, the shape of it, uh, two of the electron domains are in an, an a, a line straight across from each other. And the bond angle there is 190, 190 for 180 between these two. And then the other three are arranged around the axes. But if we rotate it, we can see that this molecule is symmetrical in all directions. So all the bond angles in the central part there are at 90 degrees with respect to each other. The ones around the center and it's hard to show those, but they're arranged in a three-sided, uh, like a triangle pattern. So here we have, in fact, something like two three-sided pyramids base to base. The electron geometry is trigonal by pyramidal. So trigonal means three-sided. By pyramidal means that there are two pyramids base to base. Trigonal by pyramid is also the name of this molecule. Um, this can happen, and we'll look at a real example of this, with the molecule PCl5. Phosphorus is in family 5, and it does have five valence electrons. So it can, in fact, under the right circumstances, form five bonds. This is the molecule for PCl5, and it has the electron geometry 
of trigonal bipyramidal, bipyramidal rather, and the molecular geometry is the same trigonal bipyramidal. If we go back to our model, we can add one more single bond, and here we have a structure now um, where all of the bonds are 90 degrees with respect to each other, and no matter how we turn it, it will always look like uh, sort of four of the atoms are in a plane, and I'm going to try and get that there. Four of the atoms in the plane, and the two other atoms stick up above and below the plane. So the geometry for this is called octahedral. And the molecular geometry is the same because we're not involved with any bond pairs. The real molecule like this would be the uh, molecule SF6, sulfur hexafluoride. Sulfur is in family 6. There are six valence electrons, so it can, under the right circumstances, form six bonds. The octet for sulfur has been expanded from 8 to, in this case, 12. to remove these and go back to our tetrahedron. So once we've determined the electron domains, whether we're dealing with uh, single bonds or double bonds or lone pairs, we determine the electron domains that we have and then the 3D molecular shape will be based upon the repulsion between these electron domains. And they will always be arranged so that the repulsion between the electron domains is at a minimum, or another way of saying it, that these electron domains are as far away from each other as possible.